Okay, so now that I've got my word broken apart twice and saved as unique symbols each letter, I'm ready to animate my word. Uh, I want to take a look at my symbols because what we're going to do is we're going to have the QURK use the motion presets and then we'll do a unique animation for the letter I and maybe even separate out the dot so that we can um, kind of, in addition to animate the word, take on some of the personality of the word. All right, so first thing I want to do is take a look at my properties and I can see that my Q and U, actually all the letters, are actually graphic symbols, which is what we've been using so far. So I want to change these on the fly here to movie clips, at least the Q and the U and the R and the K, um, because when we use the motion presets, we'd be limiting ourselves if they were just graphics. All right, so now they're movie clips, and I'm going to take my eye, which is on that layer there, conveniently named. I'm going to hide it, and I'm going to just move everybody, I think I'll just move the U and the I, I mean the U and the R, in so that they more or less look like the I has no place to live. And then we'll... Uh, animate those using the presets and then have the eye come in and maybe bump those out of the way. Okay, so they're ready to go, more or less. It's all going to happen fairly quickly, so I'm not going to worry too much about perfect kerning right now. I'm going to select my letters and I, I'm going to use my motion presets. I got the motion presets from Window Motion Presets and I'm going to use something. Now that looks like the uh, Star Wars idea. So you can see that when you choose one of these you get a little preview of what it might look like. So I think I'll use the Zoom In 2D which is a fairly normal looking animation. I'll go ahead and apply that. It says do I want to replace the current motion object with the new selection and I'll say yes. And that gives it a, a prefab motion and it also gives it a prefab time, which is something of a, an, a problem because, as you can see, the eye needs a little more time. And we could, it's going to take even more time than that because we're going to have it do something a little different. So I need to have the Q, everything stay in position for a longer period of time. What that means is that I need to have keyframes set. So I'm going to highlight those and I'm just going to hit the F7 to give them a blank keyframe. If we were to hit the F5 to just add some time, it would distort the preset and it wouldn't be happy with that. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to actually select each of my letters. And I'm going to do a copy. And then I'm going to come over here, select each of my keyframes. I have to hold down the Command key on the Mac to get them. And I'm going to do an Edit paste in place. Now actually I could have them all be on the same layer um, because they're not really going to animate and when they do they're going to move frame by frame but that's not exactly what I wanted so let's undo that and to be to work well let's do it one at a time. I'll get the cube, copy, and I'll paste in place, edit paste in place, and that's a command shift V. It's like the command V, only we add the shift to it. So I'm going to command C, command shift V, get my R, command C, command shift V, and then last but not least, my K, command C, and command shift V. This way, if I want them to stay on the stage, I can just use the F5, and that way they will just sit there. When I see these gray bars, that means that they are present on the stage, but not animating. 